Hey, it's Scott Brown with a red line detection troubleshooting tech tip for diagnosing DTC P1101. We're working with a 2013 Chevrolet Cruze with a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine, RPO LUV. If you looked at the P1001 video, we talked about how to analyze the air intake system to validate that you don't have any modifications uh, over the mass air inlet or the air box assembly. We also talked about how to quickly pressurize the system to about five PSI. First step is to pull that dipstick out. If you have any pressure there, here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Okay, the PCV system on this Ecotec turbocharged engine is fairly complex. Uh, we have this PCV hose here. And then the main source of PCV when the engine is under vacuum comes through the non-return valve, which is located inside the intake manifold. Here's a picture of what a new manifold looks like. Here's a picture of what this manifold looked like. Uh, it was actually leaking during our testing and we ran some cleaner through it, got it to work better, but we opted to go ahead and renew the, the manifold. Here's what it looks like when that valve is missing. And all of these pictures are looking straight up into the intake manifold um, through the passage that feeds into the cylinder head for the crankcase. So to further illustrate this, if we remove this inlet hose off the turbo, if you find that you've added pressure through this duct and you have smoke or flow coming out of this valve here, a couple of things you want to do. Um, this valve, uh, this, the, the valve is actually located right here at this inlet and it's designed to close on a negative pressure. So when the engine's running, we have a negative pressure here and it will pull this valve closed. So when you run uh, the machine where you're running pressure here against that, you may have some leakage here. And do you see how we have smoke coming out of this port? I just put my finger in there once and, and you should have heard that noise. That was that valve down here that actually just closed off. If it doesn't close off, then this guy has got a problem. To resume testing, when you have a leak here, you can insert one of these devices and that will in turn seal off the passage leading into that port. It's always a good idea to test this two ways, both when the engine's cold and, and when it's warmed up. And this is one way to check that, uh, the sealing on that non-return valve. Pull up your scan tool data and pull up manifold pressure and boost pressure in kilopascals. I prefer kilopascals. Key on engine off, you should have your barometric pressure for your station. In our location here, we're at about 1200 feet above sea level and we typically see about 9, 97 to 98 kilopascals. What you wanna do is then back off your pressure regulator back to zero. Open up the flow control valve and, and get a listening device, get a stethoscope, and put it down inside of that hose going into the intake manifold. Slowly increase your pressure, and this is what you should see. You'll see that we started at 97, and as we start to increase pressure and flow, we're hearing some noise inside the intake manifold. And then when it gets up to about 100 kilopascals, you'll hear that noise go away. That is the non-return valve that's actually sealing up inside that intake manifold. Now, GM has a bulletin on this on how to inspect for that. There's usually a little um, piece where you can look down inside there and, and if you see that little valve missing, then you know it is missing. But they do get carboned up with oil and other carbon deposits. And it's a, it's a good idea to check it this way just to make sure that it actually is sealing properly because if they're leaking, it can cause problems with these airflow rationality DTCs. So let's talk for a minute about what is this DTC? Well, this is an airflow performance uh, anomaly. Because we've got a complex engine system with variable valve timing, it uses something similar to the speed density systems that we used to see years ago. 
because we have a manifold pressure, we have intake temperatures, and the controller knows what size that cylinder is. They have complex algorithms running inside of that engine controller so that it knows approximately what the airflow values should be. So if you've got any sensors that are out of range, and this is why we wanna do that key on engine off check with the manifold pressure and the boost pressure, and when you carefully increase your pressure, you wanna make sure that those are both running along with each other so that you don't have a, a pressure sensor that's skewed or what have you. Now, since a lot of these calculations are based on pressure, if you've got any pressure leaks in the intake system, whether it's under vacuum or under boost, it can throw this off. This is what can contribute to that P1101. So keep in mind that when you are using this pressure tester, even if you don't have the key on, you may have actually flagged some faults and you'll always wanna go in and check and clear all the codes after you've done, concluded your testing. And then fire up the vehicle and go for a road test. So I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and thanks for watching.